Hello, and this time I'm talking about probability where several things happen, either two events or possibly even more, um, and looking at working those out by working out uh, like a list of all the possible outcomes. So now this is um, only going to be useful where each of the things are equally likely, uh, even if there's, it could be like there's more of something, so like there's red, green, or white, and maybe there's more green sections than others, but as long as all of the sections themselves are equal, so like if it is um, a spinner, and we've got eight sections, and we could have like multiple being red, and only two being green, and one being white, and two being yellow, so they're not all equally likely, but each of these sections is equally likely, uh, and so there's you know, there's three ways of getting red, that's okay, we can still do it with a systematic list uh, or a sample space diagram. Uh, there are ways to do probability of two events with multiplication, but that's for another video. This is to go through drawing out systematically sort of all the possible outcomes where each of those outcomes is equally likely, and then you can look through that big list of every possible outcome and pick out the things you want over the total number of outcomes. So I'm just going to work through my three examples, and they're quite good. They sort of give a good idea of different ways of doing it. A spinner with three equal sections coloured red, green, and white, is spun twice. List all the possible outcomes. Okay, well, the first spin could be red, green, or white. And then the second spin, again, could be red, green, or white, because they're independent events. The, the, wherever the spinner lands the first time isn't going to affect the second one. So it could be red with red, red with green, red with white, green with red, green with green, green with white, or white with red, white with green, white with red, uh, white with white. So hopefully you can see I've kind of done it in order. All the reds first, greens first, whites first, and then red, green, white, red, green, white, red, green, white. It gives me the confidence to say there's definitely no other options because I've done it in a sort of a logical order where I can see that there's no gaps. If I'd missed one out, there'd be a gap in the little table. And I could have drawn this instead of like a, as a list, I could have done it as a sample space diagram with the first, um, the first spin over here as red, green, white, and the second up here as red, green, white. And you can see that each of these intersections is just saying red, red. Uh, oh, I've done that the wrong way around, haven't I? This is the, uh, this is the second and this is the first. Uh, so green, red, green, 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 white, white, red, white, green, white, white. Okay, so it's like a little table called a sample space diagram. And now I can answer the questions. In how many of these do you get a red and a green? Well, you can just look through. One there, one there. There's two red greens. And in how many of these do you, get, do you not get a white? Okay, so all of these contain white, so there are four that do not contain white. Now, it's odd that they haven't actually asked for the probability, so I'm going to do that. It, so what's the probability that you will get a green and a red? There are two ways of doing that out of a total of nine ways, so that's the probability of B happening. And the probability of C happening, there were four that did not contain a white, so there's four chances out of nine that we won't get a white when we spin this spinner twice. Maybe in your game, you know, getting even one white will mean you move into a place where your opponent wins or that, you know, you go to jail or something in Monopoly. Um, and so you don't want the white. Well, there's a four in nine chance that you won't get it and you'll be OK. Right, let's have a look at question two, uh, which I think is, it, I think it specifies that we must draw a literal sample space diagram rather than a list this time. Two fair dice drawn, construct a simple, uh, sample space diagram which shows the product of the scores on the two dice. So the first dice could be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. The second dice could be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And because each of these six outcomes and these six outcomes are equally likely, we can just do it by timesing them together. Um, and all of these, that's not why, sorry. The fact that all these are equally, out, uh, equally likely, we can fill in the table, and each of the, the numbers in the table are equally likely, and we can add it up and do the probability. Uh, and because it just wants the product, we're just going to times it together to get what the results are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24, 5, 10, 15, 25, that's a 15, it just went a bit wrong, 
uh, do, 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 30 and nope, 5, 10, 15, missed out the 20, dear, 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 20, 25, 30, and 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and th whoops, 30, and 36. Right, so now I've written out the whole sample space diagram, what's the probability that the product is at least 20? Okay, so 20 or more is what we want. So how many comply with that? So it's going to be these ones here that comply. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them are 20 or more out of um, 36. Six times six is 36. So there's 36 possible results of which eight of them are what we want. So the probability is eight out of 36. Now I ought to cancel that down, but you don't actually have to. A GCSE exam, um, if it's about probability, we're not testing uh, cancelling down a fraction. So if you leave it like that, you get the marks. So I would write that down in its unsimplified form, and then I would cancel it down just because it you know, feels like the right thing to do. So eight doesn't go in, but four does. So that leaves us as two over and four goes into that nine times, so it's two ninths. And if I'm feeling really agitated and anxious, I could do that on the calculator. Just, yes, convince myself that I've got it right. So this is very much a sample space diagram. Draw a table, fill in all the possibilities, work out the outcomes, and then you can easily just count how many. A bit laborious, but the other option would be to sort of have to think in your head, well, you know, what ways could I get 20? Well, all oh, right, uh... Well, three times, well, no, that doesn't go four times. And hope that you think of all of them and the repetition, the sort of six times four and the four times six. Whereas if you go to the effort of drawing the table, then it's just a case of picking out the numbers and counting them up. Okay, and the last example. A lunch menu includes three starters, four mains, and two desserts. How many different menu combinations are there for someone who can eat anything on the menu? Well, you could label, you could sort of say, call these sort of A, B, C, and... D, E, F, G, and H, and I. And then you could make a list. So A with B with H, and A with B with I. And this is going to take too long. A better way to think is to think about this in permutations, I think. Okay, well, you could pick any of these three starters. So there's three possibilities here. And that could go with any of these four main courses. So if you multiply that by four, you're going to get 12 different options. A with A. A with B, A with C, A with D, B with A, B with B, B with C, B with D. Yes, you get me? So all these different permutations. But then, of course, we can have two desserts for each of them. So any of these permutations, there's two options depending on which dessert you have. So we can just multiply those together. So how many different menu combinations are there? There's 24 different meals that you could combine. Now, this is helpful when there's like a combination lock. If you've got a combination lock, with three digits, you can work out how many they, their possibilities there are quite easily, because if there's three digits um, and they go naught to nine, well then there's 10 options here, times 10 options here, times 10 options here, which is a thousand different codes you could use. Now you might be able to work that out just because the numbers go from naught, naught, naught up to 999, and of course with the naught, 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 that's a thousand combinations. But let's say that this is a different kind of lock where um, there are uh, letters involved. So maybe you can pick any of these 26 letters and then any of the 26 letters here and any of the 26 letters there. How many permutations is that? Well, it's a lot more. It's 26 times 26 times 26 or 26 cubed. So now we've gone up to 17,576. So much better. And of course, if it's a password, so you can have numbers or letters or capital letters or symbols, then actually gets to ridiculous amounts, which is why uh, it's very safe to have nice long eight digit passwords with capitals, numbers and things like this. All, you know, if, if you can memorize something random, then it's much harder for people to scam your password. Whereas if you put it as password or, you know, um, I don't know, your cat's name or something like that, much easier because there's much fewer cat's names in the world than there are all those different permutations of letters and characters and symbols. Right, okay, if you've got any comments on any of those examples, then pop them down in, well, the comments section. Uh, that's what it's there for. Otherwise, I'll leave it there and say cheerio.